he was streaming stuff. Let's see if this works. Apparently not. Oh, oh actually it, it is working. So let's see how many people come by. So I, I started uh, streaming around at 5 o'clock 20 minutes ago. Then my internet went out. Then I noti noticed that my videos, there is a delay of the uh, video. Like I noticed that in the past few uh, some talk shows. And I think that be, you know because the my voice and my uh you know my head does not sync up there's a lag about half a second or a second uh and I think that is because the camera this camera you know this is the worst camera possible never ever buy this logitech you know these big companies they become that is logitech nine twenty okay something like that. And I talked about on my blog, uh, blog before. Uh, let me just show you then. So, webcam. So this is the one, Logitech C920. It's the worst possible. And also, it cannot focus. It cannot focus anything close, like any anything within. Uh, it can it can actually focus like it has micro you know it's it's got auto focus and it can come as close as you know even this close and it'll be sharp however the problem is with the auto focus firmware you know the software inside the camera because when you are close you know anything near you know within half a meter you know like an arm's length then it's always blurry, you know, like for a second, you'll see it's very sharp, then it becomes blurry. The final, uh, you know, focus is always blurry. So that is this Logitech C920. It's uh, one of the worst. Uh, do not buy this camera. And the camera I am using right now is a Logitech, you know, cheap, cheap camera, like 10 years old, uh, <laughs> you know, $30 from 10 years ago and uh, it works fine you know that that is what I'm using but it does not have auto focus um, so um, so what I'm going to do is a um, I guess I'm going to let's do the JavaScript then So web dev blog go to the SVG. Yeah, let's so let's do a live coding. Uh, live coding shape styles path elliptic path. So what I want to do is um, okay. So okay, copy that. Um, Let's go to JavaScript, my web day blog. Let's go to the top, add a new section, paste it here, uh, linkify and xar start command log mod. Okay, so you can see all my Emacs commands here. And now let's copy that, paste it here, and uh, we want to uh, interactive app uh, path elisp svg circle arc okay uh, that's right uh, c a r c l e circle arc uh, let's just say that and uh, call call the command xar html copy uh, copy HTML by link. What 
that does is that it copy the content of this page uh, to this link. So essentially creating a new page. So now copy the title, go back, open the file, modify the title, modify the date time, and uh, that, and basically delete everything on this page. Uh, Chrome browser, paste it here. I want to use Google Chrome browser here because I have JavaScript on there. And here we want to start to write the application. Okay, so this is going to get com complicated. Um, so first of all, copy the name, uh, paste it, make it JavaScript, linkify. So I just created the file here. There's no content yet. So this is my JavaScript script. And so what we want to do now is that we want to create this um, let's see if you can see that we want to create this um, SVG tag uh, by using JavaScript and we want to create a bunch of inputs input boxes on the web page so uh, people can adjust those input boxes and see a you know the actual result Okay, let's go to keyboard. No. Wait, why is that? Go to Xan Talk Show. Uh, invert. So I have this article. Uh, arrow key efficiency. That is right. But uh, I want to go to Xan Talk Show. because we did a talk on that yeah I'm not feeling like um some talk show search for invert so there is the article here but that is not right so this is 2019, April 24th, uh, April 24th. So do we have a April 24th? 
No, we do not have a page for April 24th. That's strange. But anyway, let's just open this page. Open this page. So this page has got the thing we want. Uh, because you can see it. Copy the path. You can see the uh, interactive application here because I can change the value. You can see the value changes there. So it's basically got the framework we want. So let's just search for uh, and copy it. Copy it, close it, close it, uh, keyboard block, close it, go back to my uh, circle arc application paste it here and show in browser so we got this thing and we just want to modify this so um, so let's say interactive circular C C I R C U A R arc And uh, the we want the parameters to be X and Y um, RX ID RX size uh, size two max length two RX okay so let's see how it looks in browser okay that's not exactly what we want but refresh Rx needs to be a input. That is right. So we got the Rx right. The others we can remove. Remove the table. Remove, remove. Remove table. And basically, we don't care about the others. So we remove that as well. But the display we want. So we put the display here. Delete, delete, delete. Save, switch to browser, refresh. So we are getting ourselves a some sort of skeleton for the JavaScript. Uh, and we want to say. Uh, So this is the input box for the Rx parameter. We have so we have these parameters. Okay, so these are the parameters we need. So so we got Rx. Okay, and we need Ry. That's right. Replace Rx by Ry. Okay, and uh, we need one for rotate. Rot. Okay. Uh, what? Right. 
so hold on a second copy that paste 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 replace rx by rot yes 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 and replace rx by arc flag yes 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 okay and actually arc arc flag is either yes or no with uh, one or zero so so size is uh, one max length one uh, value okay that value means the default value let's say one so arc flag rotate arc flag sweep flag okay so sweep flag yes 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 okay then last two parameters is x and y so which is let's just copy it there uh, remove r no yes yes no yes yes no yes yes no yes yes okay that's pretty much what we have so let's show in Google browser RX RY okay so there is something um, there shouldn't be wait yeah we don't want BR so let's remove BR okay and then we are going to have a display area so this is SVG SVG display ID okay so let's copy that ID go to the top SVG basics no we don't want that uh, let's leave it that style okay then SVG display, uh, we want a C, uh, CSS cascading style sheet, and we want this is an ID, and we want border, okay? Border solid red, solid thing red, okay? And let's switch back to HTML showing browser okay so rx ry rotate rx ry rotate so what does it um, Rx, Rx, Ry, uh, then rotation. Arc flag, sweep flag. Okay, so there, there needs to be um, other things. But let's let's just begin with this. I mean, let's get the structure going. So this we don't need. Section. Section we don't need. Let's remove it. And actually, this we don't need. Let's remove it. Uh, actually, that we don't need. Remove. Remove. And let's just go to the SVG JavaScript. Okay. 
and let's see how it goes. So what we need to do is to first of all we need to intercept get these values of the input boxes. So we're gonna do constant uh, uh, get uh, get element by ID okay and I think you need a document before it uh, but let's just hold on X R X okay uh, Rx get element. So we do have the element Rx dot values. Uh, okay, should be value. Rx dot value is the value of that. Let's just print it and see if we got this working in the first place. So the default value is 8. Okay, so let's show in browser. Okay, let's turn on the console log. Uh, yes. And go to the console and uh, uncaught reference error. Element by ID is not defined. Indeed because you need document get element but get element by ID which is idiotic okay refresh 8 so we got the value of that uh, so that's good now we got the value now we need to do this for all of them We need to do this for all of them, uh, all the inputs, and uh, that I that is right. So, so here is how you get the value. Let let's just do it then. Get the value for all of them. So, uh, so so hold on a second let's go back here yeah rx ry now I don't like the single quote so let's just replace them all by <laughs> double quote rx ry and uh, rot okay rot arc flat Okay. Yeah. Sweep flag. Ah. And X and Y. Okay. So that's how you get all these values. Now you have all these values. You can, yes. And by the way, this uh, arc flag default should be one, and sweep flag default should be one. Okay, let them be. And now we need to generate a SVG uh, tag like that. That's what we need need to generate. But before we do that, we need to get this display, um, SVG display um, dive. Okay, this should be dive.
so we can get the SVG display element the reason we need uh, we want that is because so that you know that's where we want to put the SVG there you know to insert but before we can insert we need we need something to insert we need this string uh, we need to generate these elements and insert it so the way you do that is to of course you go to the um, scripting SVG I have an example here that's the one you want to use so create element SVG one document 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 dot create element NS NS uh, stand for namespace uh, it's uh, one of the stupid thing from XML so here you create a SVG document which is that then you add width and height. Okay, so okay. Okay, so uh, set attribute. Okay, uh, set attribute width equals to set attribute width equals to. So that's how how uh how much. Which do we want? Five hundred. Um, one thousand. Shall shall it be? Oh, one thousand is too big. Let's say five hundred. Okay, and we need the height. That's right. Uh, then. So we got width and height. Then we want to generate a path element. That's easy. We do this again. Constant. Uh, path 1, let's say. Path 1 and uh, okay then we uh, the path elements needs to look like these you see so the SVG element we don't need no longer need path element needs to look like this and we actually need to add a style so so let's do that uh, So we are adding a style because if you do not add style, the path may be colorless. You know, by default, uh, it may not have any color, or it has feel. You know, it's pretty stupid. Uh, so let's actually let's see what um, yeah, let's deal with styles later. First of all, let's just get the um, element up. So we got SVG one that's the container then we got path one right but path path needs data uh, you know SVG path it needs D equals to something so what you do is you just like that you set the attribute D but what should the value be uh, that's the interesting part so uh, so that's what you're gonna generate you're gonna generate a string and uh, add it to as the value of D the D attribute so uh, what string you want to generate you want to generate a string like these like right now the here so let's let's do it here uh, let's just put it here so we can see so M okay so let's do this we need a uh, start point 
uh, start x uh, start x will be so 500 500 let's start at 100 and 100 50 50 okay so So we're gonna um, path string, okay? Path string will uh, be equals to m Now we might uh, want to use the JavaScript template string for this purpose because a template string is easier to read so javascript in depth string template string uh, yeah let's use template string so template string so instead of that you have that uh, and uh, for every element you just do that so this will be start start x okay start x start y and uh, hey fuba good morning <laughs> oh, hey so I'm kind of I'm kind of aimless today and goalless um, because how many people are here? Three people. Because I began I began uh, broadcasting live uh, uh, at four o'clock, but my internet went down. You know it it restarted automatically. Then. Then I noticed my video is having lags because of the camera. Uh, so you know, I'm so I'm not <laughs> I'm not actually doing any. I'm just kind of wasting time. Well, I, good morning. So what what have you been doing? So what I am doing right now is you know I want to code this. Uh, I'm coding a live stream. I mean, I'm coding this. I'm coding. I'm creating a live application, uh, 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 interactive application that draws ellipse uh, cir circle arc uh, with SVG. So, so what do you been up to today? You are in US, right? You are in USA. You know, I'm thinking like you know maybe I'll delete the video actually after today because I don't I don't feel like I'm doing actually any kind of a talk show I'm just doing random is my voice actually on yes okay so so right now we are generating this path string USA okay cool so do you are you are you a programmer yeah, I, yeah, because you have GitHub, right? So you are, and you are an Emacs user. So what, what do you do? I mean, do you work at a company right now, or do you not working, or you know, uh, you, you work? You are a programmer. So, so like, what do you, what, what kind of programming do you do, or and what language? So path string so that then so path string then we need a uh, oh so the starting point is m uh, that's the starting point and the l is the actually why don't we just copy that okay wait. wait. Okay, 
so no, let's see. Okay, Fuba says I own, I own my own company, and I am a closure closure script hacker. Oh, that's fantastic! That's wonderful. Uh, closure, yeah, and uh, so I'm familiar with SVG standards. Years ago, I made my own graphing library using SVG and closure script and React.js. Oh, that's fantastic! And that was years ago. So actually, I never uh, uh, got the hand of using a hosted. I mean, a, a language that compiles to JavaScript. You know, so today we have a lot of them. You know, Closure Script is one of them. We also have uh, quite a lot of them. Almost it's like all, almost every high-level language they have a project that converts converts uh, the code to JavaScript. I know there's a one for Golan. I think there's one for OCaml and maybe Haskell and Julia. It's like almost every language has, you know, a, a you know, com a compiler that compiles their language to JavaScript. But when using that, there's a there's a question actually I uh, maybe I can ask you, maybe you know. It's like it's like I can I understand if I'm coding Clojure or Golan, okay, um, or Python, uh, you know, I I I could write, you know, I could write some kind of uh, inter translator, let's say, that converts one language to the, to the other. No, I cannot write it. But actually, what I mean is that, uh, you know, for you know, for example, in a language, you have lots of functions that deal with strings. So in JavaScript, you have a set of functions that deal with strings, like substring or you know index of a string or search string, and so on. And same thing in Python and uh, you know Golan and 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 Clojure. But you know they are slightly different. But however, you can write a program. I mean, if you know Clojure. Well, and JavaScript well, for example, you you could easily uh, write a programs, write functions, basically that 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 when you call this closure function, it tra it it transform you know it the string function into the JavaScript version, which so this is rather easy to do. Same thing for the other things. But anyway, my question is, when you use JavaScript to code code the website you have to use lots of uh, uh, DOM stuff like right, right now I'm doing you know the document uh, create elements you know that's part of the DOM from from the browser you know then there's a set attribute uh, and there's get an element by ID then later on we're gonna add events so all these are uh, DOM methods so but if you are using Clojure to translate to JavaScript, how do you do these things? That part I never understand. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Clojure or Golan. You know, the, I'm asking because the question I have is, is like, I do not imagine there is one consistent way 
across languages or even within one language. Like, so, you know, for string manipulation or for, let's say, computing prime numbers, you know, I can easily see how you can have a closure code, you just translate the function to the JavaScript function version, you know, that's easy. But when it involves DOM, how do you do it? I mean, how, you know, because on basically every web application, more than half of the code is actually about DOM, you know. Uh, so closure and closure script is an expert level language that takes years to master, but it can make you got like in comparison. <laughs> okay, that's bullshit. <laughs> but that's the exaggeration, you know, that's because everyone loves their language says that, you know, not God like, you know, nothing, nothing like that. You know, Haskell people will say Haskell is God like and so on. So in ClojureScript, you don't manipulate strings to generate HTML, you use uh, native data structure literals declaratively okay no pro no programmatic DOM manipulation just the data structure literal yeah but no but I I I kind of see what you are trying to say but that's not true you know because <laughs> you actually unless you are writing trivial programs you know hundred lines or thousand lines beyond one thousand lines you have to actually deal with DOM you know the nitty-gritty manipulation for example let's say uh, yeah. Okay, so actually, so you know, I asked this question before. So some people, the the answer I get is is kind of like basically nobody today programs uh, JavaScript the way I'm doing right now. Like you know, calling set attribute or you know, document create. People don't do that. Instead, you know, they use React. You know, I've learned I I've learned React. I actually never coded anything, but I've I've went through the tutorial and I I understand what it does and which I like it very much. But however, so so nobody is actually you know creating JavaScript like uh, uh, writing DOM you know raw like what I'm doing right now. So instead, they use a library a framework such as React. So in React. You don't, you don't call these create elements or set attribute, uh, but instead you. Well, basically, it's, it's they just have a wrapper that you know you 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 use a, a, a you know slightly different syntax and they they call their code to actually, you know, actually they do call these commands, you know, this set attribute to create the element. In, in a sense, they manage the elements for you, but yeah, but still, okay, so suppose you are using Clojure script, how do you, uh, how do you use React with it? You know, so a anyway, so um, that is my question. I, I, you know, I'm. I don't think I'm actually asking the question well because <laughs> you know I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling so good right now. Um, oh, okay. Uh, you're trying to show me. Are you? Are you on a, is there a possibility, are you ever gonna go on video? <laughs> Judging from our discussion yesterday, the answer is no, probably, like never. <laughs> That's a problem I have with the geeks, you know, like you don't, want, you know, because then whatever we are going to talk, you know, the way we interact, the, the communication between us, you know, whether you, you know, when you want to show me something, it's going to be extremely inefficient, you know, because when you are on video, you can, 
people see your expressions and everything uh, you know you, it's it's 10 times more efficient than whatever than just pure plain text but the reason okay the reason i think a lot of people nerds you know geeks they don't want to go video for for you know quite a few reasons you know for uh for example one of them is there is for, for, first of all you know they are shy or they are you know they are introverts so they are not prone to you know go on video you know uh, not in real life but they don't want to do a video as well so just like me except you know i I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, I, I'm kind of, in, I'm mostly introvert, but I, I could do, you know, uh, talking to a lot of people. That's, I have no problem with that, if, 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 if it's not too frequent. And I, I like to talk about my opinions and stuff, so I don't mind showing my face. The other thing is, okay, so a lot of nerds, they, I sup, I suppose to to actually talk you need a pretty face <laughs> you, you know that is actually true you know you, when 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 you when uh, when you do not look maybe you know people you know programmers maybe you are fat you don't look so good you know you are nerds you know a lot of nerds you know that is part of the reason uh on, on the i mean basically generally speaking when you are pretty you tend to show your face, you know, <laughs> and that that is oh, that's that is true overall, uh, historically and today. You know, it's like a general pattern of human behavior. You know, when you are pretty, you tend to show yourself, and also you can see this when uh, on different on the age. You know, when you are younger, young people, you can see them. You know, they they don't mind talking because they are naturally, even they don't know nothing about history or society but naturally they they can take take off their shirt you know guys or girls they wear bikinis you know they go out they trounce around you know they they talk and do, th do things because they are pretty even even you know they may not actually know it because they are <laughs> when i was young i didn't know you know and when and and that that behavior you know showing yourself gradually disappears when you age you know, you can see this in women. You know, you know, in females, when you are when they are young, they show every, every everywhere. You know, but it disappears when they become you know thirty. Then less. You know, then then you know when they are forty, then it's less and less. Uh, and similarly for guys, you know, like like when I was younger, I I could take off my shirt. I look uh, I look good. You know, <laughs> I can walk down the street. You know. Not but but not today, you know this you know, ugly guy, you know. So I mean, it's it's not just me, but it's natural. You can see, you know, like you can see it uh, statistically. Statistically, like you just go out on the street, you know, you know, you just look at the doesn't matter it's a city or you go to the beach, you look all the people, you know, showing around are the young younger guys tends to be showing around the ugly people, fat people, ugly people older people they don't they hide okay and this applies to not just your face but also your uh, status in society you know like when you are doing well you tend to talk to a lot of people make contacts make contact to your family to your friends hey do you want to do a meetup you know there's a things going on because you are doing well you have money you know you are driving a fancy car you you know but when you are down, when you have, you know, when you are, when you are down and under, you don't have money, you you depressed, you are a failure. You don't contact your people. You don't contact, you know, you 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 become gun like you disappear. You don't contact your friends. You don't contact your family. That's a general thing happens, you know. I know because that's what I have been, you know. That's my status, you know. I have been like that. Uh, but it's not, it, I mean, it's just uh, generally true. Uh, but anyway, perhaps I will make a video someday, but uh, but all you need to do is Google region closure script. Uh, I'm not a nerd, but a strong, handsome man <laughs> who is intelligent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on, video then. So let's have a, you know, we can do Google Hangout. 
so the thing about you know I don't want to Google stuff you know of course I can Google I Google I you know I read Wikipedia and programming languages all day all day and night so I, I mean that's what that's one of the situation where I talk to nerds you know like some people for you know like 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 right now or or I have you know not not just you but I have a lot of experiences like some programmers I really like I you know they know some stuff I want to learn from them but the moment you ask them you know they don't they cannot they cannot teach you know, I, I mean they, they don't want to you know they don't want to go to in uh, video they want to text then yeah if you I, I mean great yeah if we're gonna do text or you you's gonna send me some links thank you I can do that myself and I've been doing that for 20 years you know I can you know I can start to learn answer my own questions about closure script about how they interact with uh, react you know and they are literally uh, hundreds you know of YouTube videos on, on that subject as well that's the point I mean the point is because we know each other like there's a moment like right now not, not just you but I have a, you know the, in my experience there's lots of acquaintances and friends you know or, um, I I like so on the instance I ask them you know they they kind of shy away or uh, because the the point is when you have a moment you know someone a friend okay you there's a moment you exchange and he you know like I I I don't need another link you know to <laughs> to go to study about this because then I I can find it what's the point of asking you then you know if you're gonna just send me a link. So this reagent minimalistic react for closure script. Uh, okay, so so the other thing I I don't really like closure because not because of the language because closure heavily intertwines with Java and JVM. It's uh, it's, it's it's extremely pain in the ass with the Java and JVM. And uh, you know, I have uh, I have written an essay. I don't know if you have seen it. I don't know if I should mention it because I kind of tired. You know, I have because I have I have thousands of essays about just about every uh, programming language. I mean, every topic. And so so my talk show becomes you know I just show my website because and I got tired of it. You know, I don't want to. You know, just sell my own website. But I have written, you know, I have studied closure. You know, I did, I, I have. Um, yeah, let's Google Hangout sometimes then. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you have? Do, are you on Twitter? Or how do we? How do we contact? How do I contact you? Uh, yes, yes. Closure script is hosted on. Okay, closure script is hosted on top of JavaScript. That's great. You know, I know the guy who wrote closure script. I, well, I don't know him, but I, I know who he he is. He's on Twitter. You know, he's a big Lisp fan. You know, and on Twitter, and he's another example right on our topic. You know, he on Twitter, all these nerds, you guys, okay. Don't like to show your face. So you look, you look at their profile. They got a, they got a picture of you know a Batman or something. So but the, this closure script guy, he's got a, a profile photo of some kind of a mask with horns. <laughs> you know, so these fucking nerds. You know, this. What are they thinking? So this, so so I mean. So it, so it's it, so they are shy about showing their themselves. So shy or something. Well, not necessarily shy, but occasionally, you know, these people. I I guess when when forced or something. Okay, you you know, you have to give a talk, a lecture, you know, in a conference, right? Um, you know, today we have lots of tons of conferences. You know, like, you know, we have hundreds of conferences every year. Uh, all the programmers gather, and you know, and uh, you know, there's a, a lot of lectures. 
But I'm thinking, you know, those people actually are not the nerd types. They are, the, they are these programmers, this new generation of program programmers since since year ten, uh, two thousand ten, I suppose. You know, those people they give talks. Uh, but anyway, so this closure, um, <laughs> they are not good looking like me. Thank you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, so, um, so anyway, so I don't know what I'm doing. So let's, maybe that's, uh, today's talk show is like screwed up, fully screwed up because I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I'm, because there's no goal and I was, you know, Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, Powell, Powell, where are you from? Like, like, what? Where are you from in US? Are you in US? Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry about a goal. Just talk and relax. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> that's good but but you know no people watching is no good it, it, well actually I don't know so um, so should I continue with this JavaScript or what um, oh originally from Poland now I live in New York City great uh, New York City, yeah. I've never been to New York, New York, New York City. So what? What else? Let's talk. Maybe let's stop JavaScript then. You know, I noticed that every time I start to code JavaScript, I mean, this it looks like my my followers there's a uh, little interest in JavaScript. I can kind of guess why. I kind of know why because, um, well, first of all, I most most I most uh, people follow me mostly because my Emacs stuff, and uh, you know then you know uh, programming my programming language stuff, uh, and as we know the Emacs people they are not usually typically practical people, and a lot <laughs> in the Emacs land, a lot of them are weird you know uh, or, or we say we have disproportionate number of people. Who are kind of very weird. I mean, among the Emacs users, I mean, that's kind of a like it is. It is that way because some sort of mutual attraction. Because Emacs is weird. It's intent. It's in intention. It's intended to be this weird, non-conformal. You know, is is this niche uh, thing. So that attracts those people who are kind of this niche kind of people. And not not all Emacs people are weird, of course. But I mean, there's a lot, a good high percentage of them are, compared to let's say, uh, other programming communities, let's say Python. So uh, in Emacs community, there's a lot weird people. I mean, I mean, not just. I mean, okay, I I can suppose I am one of them, but there are a lot. Uh, I know actually I know quite a few they are <laughs> pretty weird you know in some other ways that you know um, eccentric people yeah uh, so and uh, yeah uh, eccentric people so what what I was saying uh, I forgot why am I mentioning that oh yeah so so Emacs people most people who follow me are you know, because of my Emacs stuff, and among Emacs people, most Emacs people are, they are, you know, most of them are very uh, uh, fanatical about open source or free software foundation. You know, and uh, me uh, and also these kind of people in general. So they also typically, a lot of them, let's say, use Linux, Linux. Uh, and also a lot of them are 
uh, uh, not mainstream, you know. They are kind of weird. They, they are not, they don't like mainstream stuff. And uh, they also, because they follow me, because I talk about a lot about programming language elegance, this kind of thing, programming language design kind of thing. This subject is not a mainstream subject. You know, this subject is not mainstream. Is is like, uh, what's the you know best most the best language to get a job? Like Java, C, C plus plus. Those are mainstream things in JavaScript. Okay, <laughs> you know, uh, the the people are talking about the elegance of programming, Lisp. You know, racket scheme. Those these are niche you know they are like the fringe of society you know me part of it as you know included so we are this fringe of society you know fringe meaning like how many programmers in the population less than one percent right something like that i'm pretty sure less than one percent one in hundred you know that's that's a lot of people but you don't have one in hundred as a programmer but anyway among programmers, how many people are Emacs users? Less than one percent, I would say for sure. Among programmers, I'm talking. I mean, you you look at all the people who make a living by programming, by coding. Okay, and of of these people, let's just limit to USA. Of these people, how many of them actually use Emacs? You know, uh, regularly as their editor. Less than one percent. You know. But how many uses, let's say, uh, VS Code or Atom? <laughs> that then that's gonna be like ten percent or twenty percent. Okay, so Emacs users are kind of this niche, very small uh, group. You know. Uh, okay, so and also Emacs people, they also tend to be because they are the mainstream. They also tend a lot of them, disproportionate number of them, tends to be poor. You know, poor like me. You know, because they are weird. They don't. They don't. They don't have a job. They don't have a regular job. They do whatever. You know, that is they do. You know, so they tend to be poor. <laughs> so, uh, well, not not everyone, of course. A lot, a lot of them. You know, uh, weird. So Fuba Fuba says, uh, Emacs attract attracts eccentric people. I only know it well because I studied Lisp and uh, use Clojure, okay? And most programmers are worthless followers who have no idea of their own. Who have no ideas of their own. They care about getting a job and care not for the study of computation. Yeah, and uh, bringing new uh, ideas to the world. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Uh, No, uh, no, that's false, Powell. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you because I'm the master of addressing these, uh, these, these fake news. You know, they they are fake news in the world, in the, in politics. You know, you, you you guys know it, right? But they are also fake news. A lot of them in the programming community. I'm the master of actually pointing out those fake news. The link you just posted, I don't need to look at it. In fact, I've seen it. I see it every year because I study this kind of thing. That, that, that's fake news. Okay. Be okay. You, you, that link, Stack Overflow, I, I suppose that's a survey. You know, they, they do that survey yearly. You know, they survey, you know, how many people, what languages you use, how many years you have in programming, you know, what's your favorite framework, you know, what percentage, you know, they do these statistics every year. And how many people, what's your favorite editor, you know, how many people use Emacs? That's fake news. First of all, they, they do that, you know, they do that, this GitHub and Stack Overflow, they do that to promote themselves, just like Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> okay, because these kind of things, programmers get excited, they know that because they have statistics. Every time they write it this way, they they write some content. Oh, there's a lot of traffic. They they get money, you know, money. Uh, that's what what happens. Um, so they create this survey. Okay, then it says forty five percent of the users are Emacs. <laughs> that's that's fake. That's 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 bullshit. Okay, yeah, forty five. Uh, the reality is. What it means is that 45% of users who 
actually take the Stack Overflow survey uh, are Emacs users. So, so but how many people take the Stack Overflow survey among programmers? Among, you know, let's just say in USA, all, all worldwide, okay, among people who makes a living by programming, okay, because when we when we want to talk about these the statistics, you gotta be you gotta become scientific. You know, we're talking about everything is well defined. So by you know our question is how many people, how many percentage of programmers use Emacs? First of all, what do you how do you define programmer? You know, do you define you know who who has written code, you know, some code in their life is that programmer? Do you define, you know, a three D visualization uh, uh, you know, working in gaming industry, is he a programmer? Do you define uh, design web designers? Do you define her? You know, usually it's a, a woman. You know, she sometimes write code. You know, some CSS sometimes, but most of the time, half of the time, she design websites. You know, do you count her as a programmer? So first of all, you have to be precise. What do you mean by programmer? So it, it, so but so I can throw out uh, the way I define programmers. Okay, so so all those people who write code, um, who makes a living by coding, primarily coding. Uh, so anyway, we're not going to get into details. So my point is just that that forty-five percent of Emacs users—that's bullshit. You know, for an Emacs user like us, who are li you know living in Emacs and love Emacs and. We see that we say we we think immediately. Oh yes, that that's a lot of people. You know that's bullshit. In reality, you you actually go to a company, you survey. You by all means, by any means you you want. Okay, but the point is, if you actually seriously to think about the issue of how many people among programmers are actually using Emacs, it's less than one percent. Even even fucking less than. One in one, one in one thousand. Okay, less than zero point one percent. That's how many <laughs> actual Emacs users. So this is another uh, bullshit. That's the uh, uh, in what four point five forty five. Uh, yeah, four point four five. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm saying it's far more or less than that. I'm saying it's not. The among programmers who use Emacs, uh, among all, if you count among all computer users who use Emacs, it's one in a million. You know, if you just limit it to programmers, however you define it, it's less than one percent. It's less than zero point one percent. Okay, that's reality. It's nothing like the four point one, four point five percent bullshit. This. Uh, people and you know that's fake news. That's what you want to believe. You know, tr trust me. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't mean to. You know, you, you know, sh sh shut you down. It's 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 what you like to believe. You know, it's it's like Mac Mac users. Mac users are, are fanatics. You know that I despise the fucking Mac users because they, in the Mac it's like just like the the old saying Emacs versus VI or language wars. It's a religion. You you know you program in Closure for example. Okay, you love it. So to you it's like this is God. This is design of the God with Closure. Every language is worthless, you know, because closure, you only all you have to do is uh, define the structure, everything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> then you have the e Emacs phonetics, you have the Mac phonetics, Mac OS, you know, Apple, Apple every day they go to conferences, you know, Apple, Steve Jobs back then. That's all bullshit. It's it's just like religion. That's what you want to believe, you know. So I. So so, what is my religion? I okay. My religion is anti-religion. <laughs> it's my I thrive. My specialty, my expertise is is attacking this this fucking fake news. Every in, especially in Unix and Linux and this uh, Haskell, this kind of Emacs programming community. <laughs> Vim is popular, far more popular than Emacs for sure. Because first of all, Vim is part of Unix. Vim is part of the Unix system. So Emacs is not installed, you know, by default. 
back this is true back 30 years ago uh, 40 even 40 years ago and it is true on Linux Linuxes or almost basically every distribution of Linux so when you learn Unix you know sysadmin or even 30 years ago VI is part of it it's part of the thing you have to learn along with all the bunch of bash or you know uh, command line uh, crap you know those, those Unix shit you know cat tail and all that um, so um, so yeah so so VI is part of a Unix and that's part of the things you have to learn so it it is obviously and patently uh, it's far more uh, popular it's quite a lot more popular in, than Emacs throughout the past 20 years or 30 years except except uh, the difference might be except in uh, 1980s or uh, you know 1980s or late 1980s because that was when or early 1990s okay that because back then when e Emacs is truly one of the uh, what what today's slang you know internet slang is called killer app okay Emacs is truly one of the greatest uh, application you know back then you know 30 years ago because it it's it, the you know at it, it's the the top of design the top of technology you know the you know what you call the the uh, state of the art back then you know, you know there's nothing better it's a uh, it's it's also, you know in every every way in every aspect okay but that but that days has been long gone you know that Today Emacs is just shit, you know. It's, it's just shit. <laughs> Evil mod, you know. Try soft light keys, okay? Full bar, you know. That's far more efficient than Evil mod. Evil mod. Uh, not shutting me down. <laughs> I don't care how many use. It's still a how low number compared to others. Yeah. Uh, no one says okay now people are coming on actually I'm okay so uh, no one says I doubt that Vim usage is so common either I would guess things like VS code Xcode major IDs are almost the entire market yeah that is true uh, because I mean but I was saying Vim it was you know among Linux among the Unix you know when your job is you know involving Linux and uh, Unix back then you know VI is you know the uh, it, it is the main and still I, I suppose still main editor in in the Unix uh, Linux uh, uh, community but yeah you know the all the, all the other editors are taking the um, you know IDs they are the entire market so Daniel says hey Daniel uh, so Daniel says Emacs has an identity problem trying to put a name on what Emacs actually is personally I'd like to see Emacs scan the capabilities of full-fledged IDE yeah yeah I, you know Emacs is entirely a big topic uh, you know what I really like to see me uh, is that I think the bottom line the, the real thing is Emacs Lisp there's no progress in Emacs Lisp for like 20 years you know there's a little you know we added some we added this idiotic you know closure basically the static <laughs> static variable the, what no it's uh, static scoping okay the, the, you know, the static sto scoping is one of my rant it's one of the hacker types love to talk about they talk they when they think about improving language they, their brain has no no, no content except this kind of uh, uh, static typing uh, you know uh, static uh, scope that's a big rant okay I uh, I'll go into some other day but typically this programmer you know the basically my followers so they they just have anyway so Emacs we Emacs Lisp do not have any progress except just a few like two or three uh, features added in the past 20 years and one of them is the static scope which is 
in my opinion, it's one of the most idiotic uh, choice of improve, improvement to make to Emacs Lisp. It's the most idiotic, yet it's, it is one of the feature that vast majority of the hacker types they love, they, 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 they think it is the absolutely necessary uh, thing to them. Also, the other thing, okay, related to this, the other feature, if you ask uh, Emacs users, Emacs Lispers, okay, what they want, they, what they think is the most critical to fix, I can guarantee that the next item, besides the static scoping uh, variables we already have, I can, I can tell you like right now, Guess you know you, you ask your friend go to Reddit post to see if I'm right. The 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 one feature they want now is thread. Fucking idiotic threads. You know thread is the most idiotic concept in programming. You should not have threads. In, instead of you should have, uh, you see you should have the transparent autom automatic system of uh, parallel programming. Of course, that's not easy to do, and there's no good solution for that. But that's the direction one should go. Never threads. Never thread thread my ass. Uh, Emacs the antique, the extensible, customizable, self-documenting, real-time display antique. I think most young people uh, just use the mouse when things are uh, clickable. Most IDEs have a VI plugin. Lexicoscope, yeah, lexics, lex, lexicoscoping is what I mean. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I, I have a tendency to always uh, not get the right word, jumble up, you know, like somehow. Lexicoscoping, that's what I'm talking about, yes. You know, le lexicoscoping is related to the concept of uh, closure. Now, do they actually do they actually guarantee each other, imply each other? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure, but I have to. I forgot, you know. So do do. I'm afraid to ask because if I ask, you guys are probably going to give me answers which I do not necessarily trust. Okay, because this is a. This kind of is is something I study you know, in, in depth. So the question is, is does does less does less uh, lexical scoping guarantee uh, closure? I mean are they bas so basically in 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 uh, in math uh, branch of logic the way we say it is that does does lexical scoping imply uh, closure? Like they imply each other. I don't think so, right? It's not the same exactly the same thing. Uh, but anyway, um, and yeah, so what I want to say, the other, the other thing I want to say, my rant is that closure, you know, the, the programming concept of closure is the most idiotic thing in programming languages, an idiotic feature. We should ban it, <laughs> you know, because first of all, closure, what closure does when you have a closure? First of all, when you have a closure, your function is no longer a function, uh, mathematically speaking, because it has side effects. Side effect, that's the definition of closure, essentially. You you don't have a functional programming anymore, but for, for reasons, these industrial hacker types programmers, they, they always love closure. And the other thing they love is macros, which is another most idiotic thing. Uh, No, well, yeah, well, I I see what you're saying, Danielle, but um, uh, well, I you know, um, so Danielle says, well, I mean that that's we need to um define it. I, well, uh. So Daniel says, does lexical scoping guarantee closure? And Daniel says, well, a closure is the combination of a function and the lexical environment. Uh, yes, that is that is true. Uh, tempting to take JavaScript as an example here. 
uh, yeah, I, yeah, that is true. I mean, yeah, you do need the concept of functions. Yeah. Well, right. So uh, obviously, you need functions because that's what closure. You need function, function with a, uh, you know, environment. That's what closure means. But of course, that's that's what I mean. I my my question includes. So so I don't mean closure implies lexical scoping implies closure. Rather, so my question in more verbal terms is that. Does lexic does lexical uh, scoping implies? Okay, so when you have a function, when you have a language, what language that has a function that has a, you know, definition of a function or anonymous function, and you also have lexical sc scoping, does that automatically mean you have closure? <laughs> that that's the full. I guess that's the full <laughs> sentence of the my question. But anyway, that that's still not well defined because what does a function mean because different languages they, they are function or subroutine they vary quite a lot so anyway that's yeah so anyway that's um, getting um, that's another you are confused about closures my friend I wonder how if I feel how, how, how it feels to be confused about closures and also to have friends uh, how how it feels to be confused? <laughs> what do you mean? I can't make sense of that. Closures are not side effects. Closures are, closures are side effects. Full bar. We can start to argue right like right now. Like go go online. Go online. Get you know show your face. We start to have a debate. Xa versus full bar. <laughs> <laughs> on the meaning of closure. Closure is, by definition, is a fucking side effect. Fuck. I can, I can, like, I can see, see, see more than that, my ass. I can start to show you my tens of articles on closure. <laughs> I can actually, truly. Cassava <laughs> is a Okay, anyway, um, I'm just having fun, okay? You, you know, no, don't, <laughs> don't, don't mind me. So, actually, debating with another programmer, I, I wanted to do that. I want to, de you know, like I flame the, 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 you know, the hacker types all the time, you know, those, these Unix philosophy types, these actually those are the people that follows me because that's that's the area, that's the community, that's the kind of subject I go into. But I just always have issues with these common. So so I'm against mainstream Emacs users or Haskell or Closure programmers. We are also in the mainstream, but in this community, <laughs> I am the the mainstream of them of them. So I want to attack, you know, I don't agree. I, I mean, I don't just like, I'm not trolling, okay? People like to call me a troll, troll, troll my ass. I'm not trolling. I'm telling you the closure concept. I'm telling this, you know, Unix philosophy, these this people, the, the, the idea or Emacs people, they are thinking, they, you know, they, they are beliefs. They are, that's just, that's just religion. That's bullshit. That's fake news. Closure, the definition, the, the, the men manifested, manifestation of closure when you have the uh, closure in um, in uh, in programming languages the main manifestation is states that is side effects function don't have states the main purpose the, what you get out of closure is states just like when you are using a global variable except the variable is private it's not global you you, you want the states that's what closure is for once you have lexical scoping once you have closure, then you have object-oriented programming because you define a class. A class is a closure. Then, because you it has you know internal methods and mem member variables and and static variables and so on. That's what closure is. You know, it's a class. Then you create something out of a class of object. You know, that's closure. You know, that's. You don't call it closure because it got other features, so you call it class, OOP, you know. Um, 
Uh, good evening. I mean, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done. So, but you know, today's talk is kind of like, it's pretty bad actually. If you watch from the beginning, the first, so I've been talking for uh, 80 minutes, 90 minutes now. But the first 60 minutes is like crap. It's just me trying to code. There's no talking and stuff. So, but anyway, so then. After an hour, people start to come on, so we start to chat on random things. Programming language, kind of random. So, and I, and I started to rant. Okay, so about closure, we should. Okay, next, maybe next topic. I'll talk in detail about closure. You know, but by the way, of course, this is I'm talking, right? So I have, you know, you're gonna fail if you're gonna argue with me because I am the one, you know keep talking you, you know your point your point is not prominent but you know so uh, so but you know um, but but uh, so what I'm saying so you know I, I would like to you know debate with you know some, you guys if you you know anyone wants to uh, about some of these concept uh, ideas but first of all when you when we debate when people debate in general okay you have a lot of um, uh, hot air because often often times when two people debate or argue they actually agree but however it's just the wording there's a misunderstanding going on okay so you know perhaps there's a misunderstanding because we cannot communicate well with exactly you know maybe actually we don't have anything we disagree at the mo at the moment so anyway let me read some um, uh, some comments so I think so Norman says I think that term can be overloaded by and confusing scope versus extent uh, or lifetime of variable references uh, yes terms can be confusing and overloaded and <laughs> overloaded is one of the overloaded word in English I hate that word especially C you know C C plus <laughs> plus idiots they have that word they use that word overload you know operators anyway scope versus extent okay extend us in extending a uh, class uh, a variable references uh, Debate is fun and healthy. Okay, uh, the common Lisp standards talks quite a bit about this. About. Okay, um, so Daniel says if we want to do the closure and side effects less so, then side effects are the easier concept. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, good evening. Good evening. Am I? Uh, uh, so Fuba says functional languages don't allow for mutations and yet have the closures. Like what? Which one? Uh, Haskell. We we yeah well sh uh, yeah show show an example um, if you know so so Daniel says talk about closure a stroke of genius to marry this procedural or even class object oriented syntax with these functional topics uh, Okay, Norman posted a common Lisp standard is relevant to the discussion. So let's see. Scope and extent. Let's magnify. This common Lisp. Look at their documentation. It's like out of date for 30 years. You know, one time on IRC around 2006, I offered, you know, to update their uh, HTML. But you know, I'm known as a troll. You know, major troll. So many of them dislike me. So they, <laughs> they don't, they don't. Of course, their reaction is, is like, you know, go go away, go away. <laughs> this look, but it's true. You know, look at all the. You know, common list is kind of died today. You don't hear people mentioning it anymore. But 
But imagine this this HTML documentation, you know, in this HTML, this style, you know, this long lines, you know, more than 800, 200 characters per line. This is like 1999 styles of HTML. And imagine how programmers today, you want to convince them to use common list because then they read, read documentation, they see this, you think they're gonna work? This common list, uh, so, so, you know, I, I try not to swear too much, but you know, just so these programming idiots, you know, these. But anyway, so this back to the content, okay, scope and extent. In, in describing various features of the common list language, the notion of scope and extent are frequently useful, okay? Uh, those notions arise when some object or construct must be referred to from some distance part of a program. Okay, scope refers to the spatial or textual region of the program within which references may occur. Okay, extent refers to the interval of time. Oh, <laughs> of time during which references may, may occur. So they call that extent. That's, that's just like dynamic scoping. That's what you know, t the typical uh, kind of thing with that issue is dynamic scoping. You know, by the way, I'm not saying dynamic scoping is good, okay? Absolutely, uh, lexical scoping is absolutely uh, the way to go. We have dynamic scoping because in the early days, in the early days of computing, it's easy to implement. That's, that is all. Just like much of Unix philosophy, the design of Unix, the choices Unix makes, the, the, the only one reason is because it's easy to implement. That's it, period. Unix, Unix philosophy, you might ask. The, this, this principle applies to much of Unix, every Unix uh, uh, operating system, their decision, and anything in C programming language, okay? The way C is this way or that way, because it is easy to implement, these fucking Unix people. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so back to the dynamic versus stat uh, lexical uh, variable. Uh, 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 okay. So this article is mentioning it's saying these two are different things. Um, okay. Um, but anyway, so a simple example. Consider this program. So anyway, so okay, so this article goes, I guess, goes into detail about that. Uh, let's read the, the <laughs> so today's, you know, so we are just chatting here, so that's good. Uh, So mutability introduces an axis of time to your system, oftentimes unnecessarily complicating it. Yeah, Daniel says understanding scope is as easy as this. There are two kinds of scope, the global scope and local scope. Fuba says there is also block scope and namespace scope, depending on the language semantics. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so I don't know, I mean, so, you know, so there are several comments from you guys and, uh, you know, like when I'm doing talk, like I don't, I, I do not necessarily follow like who is saying what. So sometimes I get mixed. So I mean, all I see is just a bunch of comments. So maybe some of you are is trying to make a point about something, but you know, I uh, anyway. So I think maybe that's it for today. I I want to maybe next time I'll talk about uh, closure. Okay, I mean a lot of people they actually don't know what closure is i mean so i'm i might do a tutorial the basic tutorial there's no like among us we don't need to debate because i'm going just going to uh give a 
you know, basic tutorial about what closure is, then we could have another uh, talk show or, you know, we can do Google Hangout where we debate on or discuss or, you know, <clears throat> the uh, the programming features about Clojure, about Haskell, I don't know Haskell, okay, or, um, you know, we can talk about that. But anyway, so what, so I have like, uh, oh, these two are the same article. I have like, I have uh, three articles or four uh, about Clojure. So what, so this is the main one, what Clojure is in programming languages. So you have a Clojure in JavaScript, Closure in Python, and each one's got a um, page on their own. Uh, Python 2, you don't have closure, you cannot do it in a language. <coughs> What's closure in English? Uh, then closure is a programming, but, and, and also this is important because back in two, 20 years ago, when I asked, talked to, you know, I was in this uh, programming group. Nobody can explain what closure is to me because what I was asking, you know, I was I came from a math background, so I was so they talk they keep you know these elite coders they want they keep talking about closure you know this closure this or that, so what is it? Can you can anyone explain to me, in terms of mathematics, what is it closure? Nobody can. <laughs> nobody and they don't because they don't even and and they they also cannot they do not know they cannot tell me what closure is okay i know today why cannot they tell me because closure closure is not a mathematical concept okay it it has zero nothing to do with mathematics okay it is it is the way what what closure is it act, actually is just a um a, a concept, a feature of a programming language, okay? You, it has zero, nothing to do with algorithm. Uh, it has zero to do with uh, theoretical computer science or even computer science itself. Well, it, it is part of de uh, designing a language, so it has something to do with designing a language, okay? Be because it's a feature, okay? It, it is uh, language design, it's kind of the way you design a language. But it has uh, zero to do with algorithms or mathematics or theoretical computer science. Nothing. So, so, I, so I was asking people, can you explain to me what closure is? You know, in terms of math, like you know, maybe something. No, no, nothing. There's no algebra. <laughs> no, no, whatever abstract algebra, advanced math jargons. N nothing relates to closure. There's nothing because it's not a math concept. Okay, so. So what it is, it is just a feature. It, it, how does this thing arrive? Actually, um, we could, I mean, I guess there are people who modeled. So when does closure actually come into computer science? It comes into computer science when you are talking about a mathematical formalization of computer language. That is when you have the concept closure. You can say it, it's part of math okay you know so it's this is this is when when you are trying to formalize okay mathematically formalize a computer programming language and when when is this done when when do you have formalization of computer language uh, programming language you know pra the practical reason is never <laughs> you know seriously because we you know, if you search academic papers, those kind of papers are very extremely rare. Why is it rare? Because it, uh, because we are not yet there. First of all, there's no practical practicality. There's no practicality in formalizing a a practical computer language. I'm talking about re real languages, not talking about lambda calculus. Okay, lambda calculus, Turing machines, those are those are fundamental part of theoretical computer science. You know, those are models of uh, machines, not com programming languages yet. Lambda calculus is also a, a, a model of a uh, computation. It, you can think of it as, as a machine, depending on your point of view, but it's also it is not, 
But I don't know if you can actually think of it as a programming language. But anyway, so what I'm saying so far is that right now we do not have we don't we do not have you know we do not have the practice or the need to actually formalize programming languages. You know, there are some people try to study that, but it's like it's out there. It's very few. It's not there. So closure, you know, closure basically have nothing to do with math whatsoever. <clears throat> it's it's it, it's a concept that just arises when you actually try to implement a programming language because you have you have the concept of scope, which is related in you know where a variable name is, you know, and uh, and. <clears throat> Uh, um, so anyway, that's that's just a rant. So um, and what who, and and also I really despise, I hate uh, the closure concept be, because in practice, okay, in reality, in real world, what do programmers use closure for? You know, the fundamental essence of closure in practice is really just using closure, uh, just using global variables. The state is what they are using. You, you know, they, they want things to have a state. That's all there it is. That's a fundamental, the, the, the manifestation, the thing you ac actually can observe when you have a closure, when people are using closure. What, what happens to it? It's just that you have states. You are using, it's just like you are using global variables, except those variables cannot be manipulated up, you know without using the function because it's not global it's private to the function you know that's that's essentially what it is uh, anyway so i kind of ran on so um so daniel says there is okay there is the concept of closure in mathematics and cybernetics and also <coughs> intuitively the idea of a closed system as one which you cannot leave or enter from its outside may be generalized okay now i don't know you know like you mentioned cybernetics Cy cybernetics that's pseudoscience okay that's not that's not math that's not computer science that's kind of a pseudoscience uh, um, but anyway, so uh, Fuba says, you know, uh, but I'm I'm not saying you know what you are saying is wrong, but I'm you know you probably, you know, because I'm I'm you know I'm the one talking, so I just say what I can, you know. So, you know, you guys watching or you know, <laughs> you have to look for yourself, you know, or you 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 know. Uh, so when you only the full bar says when you only know one paradigm of computing, you think you know more than you, more than you actually do. So are you? So you are. Uh, I'm the expression of status. Uh, closure not mathematical concept, but a closure is a lambda expression. Closure is not a lambda expression. Closure has nothing to do. <laughs> closure is not. Uh, a lambda expression, Daniel, you are wrong. <laughs> a closure carries state. The state in its defining context is lexical scope. Okay, I think you know this kind of topic again. You know, it's you know, first of all, I'm biased probably because you know, you, you for anyone who are wa watching, you know, don't take my word for it because you know, I, since I'm talking this, you know, I cannot. You know, I, I just have to talk, you know, I talk about my opinions. But, and also, since you guys are writing this, these are very complex uh, uh, concepts, you know. So we can go into detail a lot more. And also, we have to, we might, you know, we have to, I mean, it's not some simple concept. You can type and I can understand exactly what you mean. It's probably, when you type something about these topics, I read it. I have my own con conception of what you are saying, you know, so I may take it wrongly and I start to <laughs> rant on my own uh, philosophy about it. But anyway, so that's <laughs> that's it for today, okay? So, uh, well, see, see you guys then. See you guys. Um, 
Yep. So you have ten seconds to say whatever because I think I close the uh, chat, then uh, the stream will stop. So type whatever and uh, and let's say goodbye. So lambda is a Greek letter or a concept in a particular language. Learn more language, and you will see the folly in using the term. So Daniel says, because I said a closure is a lambda expression, I'm wrong. I think of where a closure is a closure of a lambda expression. Well, closure, closure is a lambda expression. Okay, so what I'm saying is that, okay, I mean this. Uh, so, so from what I see, okay. I, I, I say that wrong because these two terms they there is a they are they reside in different logic levels because lambda expression lambda expression is an expression now closure the concept of closure the meaning of closure the, the it, it is not an expression okay so when you say lambda expression now lambda expression is an expression which which Okay, so so it is actually the the meaning of uh, lambda expression is in the context of uh, textual le lexical or the uh, gra uh, syntax. Okay, that's the majority of its meaning when you say expression, including lambda expression. Let, let me just say this first. And while the the meaning of closure, when when you see the word closure, it the meaning is more semantic. It's not about uh, syntax, syntactical aspect of the programming language. The meaning of closure it had more has to do with the semantic part of it. When when a program runs, you know what what does it do? Okay. But however, lambda expression, you know, notice the word lambda. It also it means so it means a function. So it can you know depending on how we look at it, lambda expression. First of all. Like I said before, it's it it's part of expression. It's a subset of expression. So here, the expression emphasizes the concept of uh, syntax. You know, lexical elements of the programming language. So it's an expression. But on on the other hand, lambda expression, you can focus. We can focus on the lambda part. So in this focus, then it means a function. It just so happens to be expressed as a uh, you know, anonymous, anonymous function, but it's a, it's, it's, you know, depending on the language, it lambda expression, it, it's, it's a, basically a synonymous with a function. So in this uh, regard, then closure is a, um, <coughs> you know, closure first of all is a function. It's just a function with a, spe a, a specific feature or you know the syntax. So in this context, when you think of lambda expression as a function, you know, lambda, then closure and uh, lambda is kind of the, um, what were you saying? Are you saying they are the uh, uh, same or? <coughs> yeah, a closure is a uh, instance of a function. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, by the way, so again, don't take, don't be offended what, what, what I've, I'm saying, you know. Sometimes I go into a rant, you know, Sometimes I don't get what you are saying and started to rent my own rent. So, um, <coughs> so lambda expression is an expression, and then term closure is often used synonymous. Which is value. <coughs> uh, so anyway, so I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna be dragging into you, you know. I'm not saying I'm just right. Yeah, I'm just rant. Okay. By the way, I'm not, you know, saying you guys are wrong. So anyway, I'll let um, uh, see, see you guys. See you guys next time.